I am bolt bucket. Nah, you're not, you idiot. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's bolt buckets, and I'm a little bit cold because I underestimated it. Obviously, I should have probably looked up and further. Over there, it's not too bad. Here, it's not the best. Back there, it's not the best. But, got out, jumped on the bike. Went to start it up, you know, it's a little bit cold. But I couldn't be bothered going in and getting a jacket as such. So hoodie infested is. So I wanted to do a different route to work this morning, trying to keep it a little bit more interesting. At least the first part, instead of just getting on the highway, cruising to a show, I'm gonna choose a bit of a different route. A little bit more fun for that tiny little bit. And you'll see what I mean. But anyway, I thought we'd talk about today what you normally come in to talk about, and that's motorbikes. Let's get over here. Today I thought I'd talk about the ball bucket. Now, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update. I've owned this bike for about a year now. It's only about a year. Might be long enough, might not be that long at all really in some people's opinions. But I thought I'd give you my take on this bike. This particular bike is a Kawasaki VN800B. That means it's the classic style one. Not the custom or whatever one you want to call it. It means I had that long droopy, you know, heritage soft tail looking rear fender. And it's only got a small 16 inch fat front tire. Not quite my styling to be absolutely honest. But I picked this bike up for $3,500 Australian, which for this bike in Australia is pretty decent. It came with the A-Pangers, which was on the list I'd needed to get anyway, for being six foot four. It also came with the Vance and Hines, which were great to begin with, until my back was start falling out. This bike, my, my thoughts, my views, and I'll express these by going down Main South Road, where it's a little bit windy and not just a dead straight. So, bang for buck, straight up. I like this bike. This is probably one of my favorite bikes I have owned, I must admit. I reckon bang for buck, if you wanted a cruiser and didn't want to pay the earth, get something full size, it's not learn illegal here in Australia. It's not that lambs approved on the 650 is a near 800cc V-twin overhead cam powerhouse. Not, not really a powerhouse, about 50 ton horsepower this is. So it's not the quickest, I must admit. I've had it up there a little, but it's not what I'd call quick. But that doesn't mean it's not fun. This bike to me is fun. That's why I enjoy it. I have fun on it. I enjoy riding it. I'm able to go down these little twisties. I'm doing only about 80 kilometers now because of all the traffic ahead. I can do it one hand and no dramas. You know, it's been fine. Tell me 
from the field that that was it. The headstand bearings and headstand tool. Nice. They don't feel out of whack. It's very stable until you start to go over certain speeds. But then you kind of not being really legal as such. Now we're going over a new little overpass that they've done not too long ago to go onto the last leg of the expressway. So the riding, the, the stability, the cornering isn't too bad until I kind of put extra weight on and yeah did some of those things it, it's it, it affects it a bit when you're actually going through the hills I must admit for that kind of leg just back there she's good now saying that I'm like that old school chopper guy I want to get that skinny front end and longer forks so yeah I'm gonna stuff up the handling let's just say I will tell you this getting this bike though change the gearing straight up if it hasn't already you, you gotta change it up I, I may even think and still of going the 19 two front sprocket up from the 17 just because I feel it's got enough bump to cruise along with the 19. I'm not going to lose out a great deal on that acceleration that it doesn't really have to begin with. The thing it's got going for it is it's a cable driven carbureted motorcycle. Yes, it's a CV, but it's still, I twist the throttle, I don't have to wait for a and an ECU or anything to tell some electrical doodars to open up the throttle and give it some gas. No, all mechanical. She's going. So, plus oh, I'm an old school guy. I like the carbies, I like to fiddle with things. Not just plug a laptop in and go, oh, this sensor isn't quite right, or it got some moisture in it, so now I'm in limp home mode. It's just, don't get me wrong, it's a great, you know, comings of technology and, and power and riding at times, but I don't know. I just have problems with electrical and sensors and all that kind of jazz too much. Mainly cars, but I'm not going to limit it to just cars. Alright, so to be honest, when I was looking for a bit of a, another cruiser bike, because I was without two wheels for some time, these weren't really on my radar to be honest. I didn't really know anything about them. Then one popped up and I had a bit of a look. And to me it was one of the better sounding Japanese V twins you could get. Like, I get a lot of people you commenting on how nice it sounds before I spend 120 bucks and, and put some long ass bag pipes on it with flappers. Yeah, I said flappers. And you know, it will rev. This thing revs. It's like 8200 RPM or something to redline. Now, you can do like 110 kilometers an hour in second gear on an 800cc cruiser. So I thought that was pretty decent. So if I've got this engine beneath me that can rev to those, but I nowhere near need to, I'm not using its full potential, for one. And the other thing is, if I'm 
not using its full potential. It's what they're able to really do. Then, the longevity, the reliability of this engine should be pretty decent. Now, I know this ain't the best review, but overall, I'm enjoying myself. I like this bike. Would I buy one again? Hell yeah. I would. Would I recommend you guys to buy one? Yeah. Even look at my mate, John, from Road Reality. The guy's a legend. He's got a blue one. It's a little bit poverish, you know? It's, it's bloody cool. I was blown away. He's like, I've got a V&A. I'm like, what? What's up, guys? Ready to go on a ride? Yes, we're in my backyard, and that is my 2005 Kawasaki Vulcan 800 Bobber. Yeah, I'll make two things and all that. I haven't gone off the shelf. And then you can too. It doesn't really matter what the bike is, but for 3,500 bucks, compared to a, say, a $20,000 Harley Davidson or the likes, you do those things. And you don't mind doing those things. And it's kind of turned out over these last five months that I've been doing YouTube that it's not just my motorbike almost. It's in my name, don't get me wrong. But it's for all you guys out there. And that's why I put your stickers for your other vloggers. And I'll do these little things. you with this as well one of the great things I like about this bike is is chain drive I can change the sprockets front and rear to change my gearing you know it's not hard at all really if you've got the right tools and a setup and not so sketchy like me you could just go to shop to do it really if you didn't want your bike falling over because you don't have any kind of lift or whatnot but Hey, I might do. So I don't know, I'm old school, I like the chain drive. I've had, I've ridden some rubber band bikes and I've ridden some shaft drive bikes, which were very, that direct feel and all that. I don't know, I just, I feel like I lose touch, I can't do as much. There's a lot more stuffing around. So I like the old school chain drive. Chain, carbide, V twin. It's for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. So this is just me talking about my bike. But I'll give you a bit of insight of where I'm coming from with it. Got any comments? Anything you want to add? Chuck them below. Give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free. It's not going to cost you. So I come to end. I said I'd do this before. And let's give a bit of a shout out. And today, I think we should shout out an Aussie. So, let's give a bit of a g'day to someone down down south not in SA like me but further down in sunny not really Tasmania it's right here I'm talking about Big Bert now he is called Big Bert because he is six foot seven yeah I know I'm just yeah, yeah. Now this guy is a bit of a legend. He can make putting on some, you know, tire valve caps a whole episode. Kudos to you for being able to do that, mate. I love his personality. He is great. You gotta check out his channel. Like, if you haven't already, go to the description. Click on the link in there, check out his channel. This guy has done some great videos for me in the past. We just 
got one on the weekend as well for the new intro I'm doing. You've got a little bit of time still for that, so if you haven't got me some, don't stress just yet. I'm gonna hold off so I can get a hold of you guys and see if you've got something planned or coming for me. So do not stress. A big birdie and that big Harley. Go check him out. He's a great guy. He's got some of the most beautiful scenic videos you could imagine. I know a lot of you guys that will watch my channel from overseas, you might think of Australia as a bit of a dry place. Obviously not right now watching this, it's a bit how you going. But definitely go check out Big Bird down in Tasmania. It's God's country down there. The, the rivers just flow beer from what I've been told. It's on my bucket list, as it were, to do a bit of a round the Tassie trip. So I really want to do catch up with Big Bird when I can. Big Birdie Beetle I call him at times. And get him to give me a bit of a tour of Taz. Which will probably only take a day, but you know. <laughs> it's beautiful down there. Everyone I've talked to in Adelaide, that's gone. Oh yeah, we've gone down to Tasmania. You gotta do it. Everyone's in exactly the same boat. You gotta do it. So, I will. I will be doing that one day. That is on the list. So go check him out. And I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers.